praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I want to appreciate God for tonight, for the privilege to be here again. I just want you to join me as we take this song to appreciate God. Praise life unto thee. Oh Lord, who is life unto thee? Oh Lord, I'm all the gods who is like thee. You are glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. Always do he wonders hallelujah. We are who is life unto thee. Excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent, how excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent, how excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. God, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, oh Lord, how powerful is your name, how powerful is your name. How powerful is your name, O oh Lord, our God, how powerful is your name, how powerful is your name, how powerful is your name, O oh Lord. Father, how powerful 
is your name. How glorious is your name. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. Our maker. Our helper. Our strength. Our righteousness. The everlasting father. The God of wonder. That dwell in wonder. That perform wonder. The God of glory. The King of glory. Awesome God. Marvelous God. Dependable God. We worship you. We honor you. Tonight, as you go through your word, he has the Lord, please, you speak to us in Jesus' name. Even tonight, as we call on you tonight, Father, you hearken to us in the name of Jesus. Father, please have your will tonight. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I want to appreciate God for tonight, even for the privilege to be here again. And if you are watching us through any of our social media network uh, channel, you can enable share the link with your friends and your neighbor. As you go, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text tonight, our first text will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, we we'll take from verse 42 to 44. Then also we have uh, John 11, we we'll take from verse 25 to 26. Let's start with uh, with 1 Corinthians first. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 42 to 44. So it will be with resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown in is perishable. It is raised imperishable. The next verse. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Verse 44. It is sown in natural body. It is raised in spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Here, the scripture here is giving analogy of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory of Christ on the cross. That is the analogy that scripture was giving. How Christ resurrected. I mean, the, 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 how Christ, the nature of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was buried. I mean, after he was buried and resurrected, that's the nature. He's talking about the resurrection. Now, let's look at John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. Jesus said to her, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. Even do they die? Verse 26. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Praise the Lord. Here, talking about uh, Jesus Christ is saying here, he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me will live, even though they are dead. And whosoever lives by believing in me will never die. Talking about spiritual death. Even though the fellow die physically, but spiritually, the fellow will not die. Now, tonight we are looking at a topic which is tagged the victory of Christ's resurrection. Before we pray tonight, the victory of Christ's resurrection. The victory of Christ's resurrection. We know the major enemy of mankind major enemy of mankind is, is sin, Satan, and death. Those are the three major enemies of mankind. Sin. And Christ, Jesus Christ has won the victory over these ones. He has won the victory over sin. He has won the victory over Satan and death. That's what we're looking at it tonight. His victory over sin, like we all know, by default, man, by default, like, let me use that word, by default, man by nature is tend to sin. Let me put it that way. And sin has separated us from God. Sin starts from the Garden of Eden, where man sinned again, where man disobeyed God. Because the Bible says that through Adam, sin came to, to us. And we hear that nature from right from the Garden of Eden, right from the time 
men disobey, uh, Adam disobeyed God. And we know that this, this sin, this issue of sin, has caused a lot of destruction, has caused a lot of separation in families, has caused a lot of diversion in the society. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible says in Romans 3, verse 23, Romans 3, verse 23, all have sinned and cut short of the glory of God. You know what? By say all have sinned. And we, we know sh for sure, based on what we see in the scripture, and what we watch that night, by, by nature, ma man is bound to commit sin. And we know also the consequence of sin, sin itself has its own consequence. Like it could lead to destruction, uh, it could lead to destruction of families, community, and nations. And also it could lead to terrible sickness. Like we praise the Lord. The Bible also says in Romans 5, verse 12. Romans 5, verse 12. Romans 5, 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin, just, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, death through sin. In this way, death came to all people because of sin. Look at that. Sin and death are linked together. But all this came through one man, which is which we know as Adam. Also, the Bible also says in Romans 7, Romans chapter 7, verse 15, Romans chapter 7, verse 15. It says, I do not understand. This is Paul speaking here. He says, I do not understand what I do. What I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate to do. Verse 18. We take verse 18 to 19 now. 18 to 19. Can I move to verse 18 with that? 18, 1, 8. For I know that I know, I, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is my sinful nature. For I have desired to do what is good, but cannot carry it out. Now, verse 19. For I do not do good, I want to do, do. But the evil I do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep doing. Can you go to verse 24 now? Thank you. Say, what a wrecked man I am who will rescue me from, his from this body that is subject to death. Now, that is, that is the nature of sin for you there. And the person who can rescue me from this, and that is what Christ paid for on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord. And that is why the Lord sent his only, uh, that is the reason why Jesus Christ came to this world, and he has to pay the penalty on our behalf on the cross of Calvary. And just guys have to pay through his crucifixion on the cross, through the shedding of his blood on the cross. Praise the Lord. And let's look at um, India. Let's look at the following scripture. Uh, Colossians Colossian 2. We'll take verse 13 to 14. It says, when you are dead in your sins, in the insumption of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all your, our sins. Having canceled the charge of death and death penalty, which stood against us and condemned us, and taken out away and nailed to the cross. That is what we are saying now. Just guys, the Bible says here, verse 13, when you are dead in your sin, in the of your flesh, God made him alive in Christ. He forgave all our sin. He forgave all our sin. Can you help me also with Isaiah 53, verse 6? Isaiah 53, verse 6. Isaiah 53, verse 6. Isaiah 53, verse 6. It says, All are like sheep. All. We all, like a sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all. Now, Thank you, Lenya. The Lord himself has laid the iniquity of all. Like we see in that scripture, Isaiah 53, verse 6, he laid the iniquity of, on, of all on Christ. That is the price Christ paid so that the sin of as men that accept him 
can be raised. For as many that believe it, as many as it can be raised. Praise God. That's the penalty. That's the victory that Christ gives us over sin. Praise the Lord. Now, also, uh, in Romans 4, verse 23, verse 24, 25. Romans 4, verse 25. Roman 4, verse 25. Roman 4, verse 25. Also, get ready what it is. First Peter 2, verse 24. Okay. Okay. He was delivered unto death for our sin. Look at that. Christ was delivered to death for our sin and was raised to life for our justification. In other words, he was delivered to death. He, he paid the penalty. Thank you, media. He paid the penalty on our behalf on the cross so that we can be as if we have no sin. That is true. I have to put this for as far as many that accepted the price he has paid for us on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord. That's the a, that's a solution. Christ gave, I mean, God himself gave for sin. Also, in First Peter 2, verse 24. First Peter 2, verse 24. The Bible says, He himself brought, he says, he himself bore our sin in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. Now by his wound we have been healed. Look at that. That's it. He bore our sin on his body on the cross so that we may die to sin and live to righteousness. Thank you. Also, Second Corinthians 5 verse 21. Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. The Bible says, describe, it was described here, it says, it says, God made him who had no sin to be a sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Thank you. That's the solution. That's the victory that Christ gave us over sin. That's the solution because one thing like I, I, I once said it here that, look, The only because right from the garden of I mean before before the death of Christ the the, the way for atonement of sin is through sacrifice of animal but just for the sin of man to be atoned that is because man cannot really go to God the way it is but we have to make sacrifice but Christ become a sacrifice for us so that we can have access to Him so we can have access to Him. And he paid the price. That is what we are talking about. That is the victory he gave to us. The victory he gave to us through sin. I mean, to overcome sin. He, he, I mean, the, the victory he gave over sin. That is the price that Christ paid. And let's look at the price he paid on the cross. I talked about it one time. And one of the price he paid on the cross that he, had, he showed it. Uh, he, he, Christ himself went through what I call audible pain, physical pain. He went through a lot of pain. And the weight of sin of mankind, from what we read in the scripture, was placed on him. Praise the Lord. He was tormented. On the, he was tormented anyway. And also, uh, you could see the image on the cross, how, how what happened when he was crucified. Even before he was crucified, he was beaten. And also, he faced abandonment on the cross. That is all the price Christ had to pay for us. And also, let's look at Romans 10, verse 9 and 11 media. Romans 10, verse 9. 9 and 11. Roman 10, verse 9 and 11. Now, this is where we are, I'm going tonight on this victory now. The Bible says here, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. You'll be saved. Verse 10. For if it is if for it is with your heart that you believe I justify, it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Now that is the provision Christ paid for us now. Now if you believe the price, thank you, media. If you believe, if you believe for what we read there, if you believe with your if you if you declare with your mouth and you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, he said you'll be saved. For it is with the heart you believe 
and I, and it is your heart you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess that faith, that faith that you are saved. Now that's the, that's the way, that, that's the route that Christ has provided for us to overcome sin. Praise the Lord. What am I trying to say tonight? That is the provision God. Has. Now, if you reject this, if you reject, if you reject, if you reject this, if you reject the plan of God for your life, what you are saying is that oh, you don't want to be saved, and you want to partake in the pending judgment. In other words, you want to be judged. You want to pay the price yourself. That's what you are trying to say. But the key thing tonight is that Christ has given that provision. For as many, from what we from what we see in the scripture tonight, for as many that would believe this with their heart and accept Christ, and accept, confess with the mouth, confess, confess with your mouth, confess Jesus as your mouth, confess and as and accept what He has the price appeared on the cross, then you will be saved. Praise the Lord. Now, you can deal with your sin problem right now by accepting the gift. That's a gift. It's a gift anyway. It's a gift of salvation, which is free. The Bible says in Romans 6, verse 23, Romans 6, verse 23, it says, For the wage of sin is dead, um, but the gift of God is in our life through Christ our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the wage, thank you, media. The wage of sin is dead, but the gift of God is in our life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. Not only does the version of our Lord Jesus Christ deal with sin, uh, I mean, deal with our sin position, but also practically, as a believer in Christ, we can only, we can have daily victory over sin because of Christ's restoration. We can have daily victory, daily victory over sin through Christ's restoration. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Bible also says in Philippians, this is our text for the month, Philippians 3, verse 10, Philippians 3, verse 10, say that I may know him and the power of his restoration and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. Also, we have here Ephesians 1, verse 19. Ephesians 1, verse 19. Ephesians 1, verse 19. It says, Ephesians 1, verse 19 to 20. And it's incredibly great power for us. And and it's, let's, maybe we should take from verse 18, media. Let's take from verse 18, thank you. I pray that your eyes will understand, your, your, I pray that your eyes of your, I pray the eyes of your heart be enlightened in order that you may know the hope of, to which he called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Media, I'm waiting for you, thank you. And in and is it comparable great power for us who believe? Look at that. You are what you believe, and that the power is the same. That the power is the same as the mighty strength. Now, verse twenty. He exact when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. The Lord bless him that was all in Jesus. The power of resurrection is available. What from this scripture we know that the power of resurrection, the power of resurrection, is available to every believer to make us more be, to make to make us like him, and also it will draw it will draw us closer. And also, I mean, we will be, we will, we will, be, we will we will have more faith. Let me put it that way. Praise the Lord. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Also, the Philippians 3, verse 9. Philippians 3, verse 9. Philippians 3, verse 9. It says, Philippians 3, verse 9. It says, being found in him, not having my own righteousness, but which is from the law, which is through faith in Christ. That's all, the right one which is from the God. Okay, let me take it from the, from the screen. It says, I'm being found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that come from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that come from God on the basis of our faith. Now the key thing is faith. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise God. Jesus, Jesus has given us won the victory. And we are weak, we are walking, we are marching from the victory that are given to us on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, media. Also, on that victory.
praise the Lord. We are looking at the victory of Christ, the victory of Christ's resurrection. One of the victory, like I said, the major enemy of mankind is sin. And the next one, uh, the next one which we want to talk about is Satan. Satan, that's, on that en- that's the one major enemy of mankind. Christ was crucified on the, cro- on the cross. Satan thought all is finished. Oh, they got him. That was the thought of Satan. But, but he never knew that everything was worked out for the purpose of God. Anyway, for the plan of God. That is the plan of God for salvation of mankind. Because the devil never knew that. And right from the beginning, right from the centuries, the devil has, t- has been trying to truncate the plan of God, to truncate what God has planned. For example, we know the case of uh, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel will know that Cain has to kill his brother, Abel. But God gave Seth. That was one thing the devil tried to do. And also the devil caused Abraham to, through his own belief, to bear Ishmael. And God miraculously gave him Isaac. Also, because of our time, we will not be reading all the scriptures anyway. Also, uh, Joseph, his brother, sold him into slavery anyway. They sold him to, they sold him to Egypt. But God, used, God saved the whole family through, through the help of, through Joseph's faithfulness. God saved the whole family through Joseph. Also, the devil had been trying a lot right from the, those times, in those centuries. You could look at the case of David too. Who committed the sin of who committed the sin that is what of death, but God gave him a repentant heart. He turned back to God. Also, you know the case of Herod when Christ was born, and Herod was asked to said they should kill all because because he heard about he, he Herod heard that Savior was born, and what he could do because the 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 uh, the head doesn't go back to him to tell him the location of the baby. Because he said he's going to worship, he's going to, he's, they should tell him so that he will worship the child. But but never knew it, or knowing to them that he has a different plan. But the, the magician didn't go back. I mean, the others didn't go back to him. The wise men, I mean, the wise men didn't go back to him. He has to order that all the babies, all the babies, two years and hundred should be killed. But unfortunately, God directed Joseph for it to take the baby out of Egypt. God saved him. God. God made the provision of escape. And also, Judas betrayed Christ. The sister, okay, the, look at the case of Judas. He said, Satan entered into him. And that was why he could betray Christ. Although, unknowingly to, to the devil too, that he's still working out things as God has planned. Praise the Lord. But as many as listen to me tonight, whatever the enemy is planning against you, the Lord will turn it out for good in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Now, those are the things that devil has been doing right from the beginning. The devil has been doing, he has doing his work just to truncate the plan of God for salvation. But thank God, uh, uh, the devil has failed. The Bible says, let's look, the Bible says in 1 Peter 3, let's look at 21b to 22. 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3 from verse 21b. Let's start from 21 to 22. First Peter says, And the water symbolizes the baptism which that announced that saved you also, not the removal of death from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience. It saves you by the resurrection. Now, look at that. It saves you by the resurrection of, our, of Jesus Christ. Verse 22. Who has gone into heaven is at the God right hand with angel author, authorities and power in submission to him. Now let's take also, let's look at first John three verse first John three verse eight eight verse eight. First John three, okay. He says, the one who does what is sinful is the devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. 
Praise the Lord. The, devil, the reason God appeared was to destroy the devil's work, that, that which he has done. Also, let's look at Colossians 2, verse 14 to 15. Colossians 2, verse 14 to 15. Colossians 2, verse 14 to 15. You see, having canceled the charge, having canceled the charge of in our legal indebtedness, we stood against us and condemned us. We are seeking out of the way, nearly to the cross. The next verse. Having disarmed the powers and authority, he made a public spectacle of them, trampling over them by the cross. Now, praise the Lord. Thank you, media. Satan is defeated. He's a, Satan is a defeated enemy. He cannot control us as long as we are controlled by the living Christ. I mean by living Christ. And for, for the victory Christ, for, for the victory that Christ gave through the cross and resurrection, the devil has been defeated. The devil has been defeated. And we as his children, we are walking from the victory. We Christ has won the cause of Calvary. Praise the Lord. He has given us victory. And that's why the Bible says in First John, First John chapter 4, verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. You, dear children, have from God and overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than who is in the world. In other words, the one who is in you, Christ that's in you, is greater than he that is greater than Satan himself. Praise God. Jesus has won the victory over Satan by this restoration. By the restoration of Jesus Christ on the cross, he has won the victory over Satan. Thank you, media. Also, another major enemy of mankind, which I'm going to look before we close tonight, before we pray. He, Christ, gave us victory over is the one is dead. Death is one of the major enemy of mankind. Now, I, I say this to believers that no, no need for a believer to fear physical death because we know that yes, if, if a believer can die physically, but cannot die spiritually. Praise the Lord. Cannot die spiritually. That's what the Bible says from one of the texts we read. John eleven verse twenty five to twenty six. John eleven verse twenty five to twenty six. John 11, 25, 26. That's our text. He said, Jesus said to, uh, to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. Will live. They say, even though they die, even though they die, they will live. No, I was, even though they die, because they live. Now, in the next verse, 26. And whosoever live, whosoever live by believing in me will never die. Whoever, whoever lives by believing in me will never die. You know what? I'm talking about spiritual death. You will not die spiritually. That's the victory that God Christ gave on the cross. Because of the death and resurrection of our Jesus, Jesus Christ, physical death, physical death to us is an entrance to glory. It's a vehicle that takes us to glory. Praise the Lord. Physical death is a vehicle that takes us to glory for every child, every child of God that dies. Death is a vehicle that takes you to glory. Praise the Lord. The Bible also says in in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 42 to 44. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 42 to 44. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 42 to 44. For as in Adam all die, I'm talking about 1 Corinthians 15, verse 42. Oh, 42. Okay, for us in Adam, all die. Well, it says similar anyway. For us in Adam, all die. So in Christ, all will be made alive. I need 42. Verse 42. Thank you. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. Now, so it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body is so imperishable. It is raised imperishable. Now, the next verse to 44. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Thank you, media. You can, you can hold on. Let's go to verse 50, 54. 54. 
54. He said, when the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come to true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Verse 55. Verse 55. We are all dead is your victory. We are all dead is your sting. Verse 56. 56 or 57. Thank you, Nadia. 56. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Verse 57. But thanks be to God, he gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for the victory he gave us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, through the victory on the cross, thank be to God who gave us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But for those of us who, who we have received Christ Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, the second day, the death or the death is a separation. I'm saying that for those who has who has who who has said you're a lot of person say, well, dead, your death will just transit you to me. You, when you when a man leave this world, you die in Christ, you transit to me with the Lord. Praise the Lord. The separation you they are, they are, they are, they are, you will still be connected to the Lord. Let me put it that way. You reign with him. Praise the Lord. Can you help me with Revelation 20, verse 6? It says, Bless, bless and holy is he who is part in, who, bless and holy is he who, who has part in the first resurrection. The second, the second death has no power over them but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for the thousand years. Thank you, Nidia. Praise the Lord. In other words, to eternity. Then let me put it this way. I want to reconsult this, that those who have received Jesus Christ as a, as a Lord and personal Savior, this death or eternal, death or eternal separation from, from God is not possible. It is not possible for you to be separated from God. You will be with him forever. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus who has given us victory over, the de over death by his resurrection. Conclusion that the same victory that, the same victory that Christ has won on the, on, over sin, Satan, and the second death on the death can be ours only if we trust him and accept him. Praise the Lord. I pray that the Lord will help every one of us in Jesus' name. Tonight I want to pray, but I want you to know this, that those are the price Christ has paid for us. Those are the major enemies of mankind. Like I said, uh, the, f the first one, praise the Lord, the first one was sin, the second one was Satan, and the third one was death. But Christ has given one victory over the, we are given up, we are, we are fighting for the victory which he has won the call of Calvary. Praise the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will help every one of us in Jesus' name. The Lord will give us the grace to stand to the end in Jesus' name. If you are listening to me tonight, uh, you have not embraced Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. I want to give you an opportunity tonight to reconcile to him and say, Lord Jesus, I know I have failed you, I have disappointed you. Please have mercy on me tonight. Forgive me tonight. Lord, I know you are more than faithful to forgive. When I ask that, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross and uh, that you rose again the third day. Forgive me of my sin, Lord. Come into my life tonight. As you pray this prayer, the Lord will accept you in Jesus' name. I want everyone of us to pray tonight. I say, Father, please help me to walk in the victory you have given me on the cross of Calvary in the name of Jesus. Grant me the grace I want to know you more in the name of Jesus. Grant me the grace to trust you more in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Say, Father, grant me the grace to trust you more in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant me the grace. Lord, grant me the grace to know you more. Lord, grant me the grace to trust you more in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant me the grace. Let me trust you more. Let me love you more. 
In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. We are going to pray tonight. Say, Father, tonight, every strategy of the enemy against your plan, your post in my life, because of the victory you have won, you gave me on the cross of Calvary. Tonight, I frustrate the device of the enemy tonight in the name of Jesus. By the victory on the cross tonight, I frustrate every device of Satan over my life, my family, my destiny in the name of Jesus. I frustrate it tonight. Every device of Satan in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Let's please pray. The first, the next prayer point is that, Lord, I declare, I declare tonight, because of the price you have paid for us on the cross of Calvary, I decree, I declare, that sin shall not have dominion over me anymore. In the name of Jesus, I declare tonight, that sin shall not have dominion over me. In the name of Jesus, Satan will not have dominion over me. In the name of Jesus, sin and Satan will not have dominion over me. In the name of Jesus, the fear of death will not have dominion over me. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. We are going to pray and say, Father, I ask tonight, today I declare, I live in dominion. I live in authority in the name of Jesus. I live in authority, I live in dominion in the name of Jesus. Therefore, tonight I dethrone the, the pro, I dethrone the agenda of hell over my life tonight in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. Say, Father, tonight I dethrone, I obstruct every agenda of hell over my life, my destiny in the name of Jesus. I dethrone the agenda of hell for my life, my family in the name of Jesus. I dethrone the agenda of hell for my life today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Media, can you help us with that? Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, if you are there. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, Having canceled the charge of legal debtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, we are taking it out of the way and laying it to the cross. Because you have canceled the legal charge of debtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, and you are taking it out of the way and laying it to the cross. Now the next verse, verse 5 to 15. It says, having the same past and authority, he made the world to attack over them. So I'm going to say tonight, every legal debtedness, they have been nailed to the cross. Therefore tonight, every legal hold of the enemy, every legal debtedness that the enemy has against me, tonight I render them null and void in the name of Jesus. I declare they will not stand Every legal hold of the enemy in legal that they are using against me, they have been nailed to the cross today and nullify them tonight in the name of Jesus. They will not stand over me, over my destiny in the name of Jesus. Every unrighteousness of the enemy over my life tonight, I cancel in the name of Jesus. I cancel every legal indebtedness over my life today and nullify cancel in that because they have been nailed to the cross. Therefore, I render null and void in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We're also going to pray for yourself tonight and say, Father, I ask for the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace, oh Lord, to, to love you more, the grace to trust you more. Lord, give me that grace, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. I ask for the grace, Lord, empower me to trust you more. Lord, empower me to, to love you more in the name of Jesus. Lord, empower me tonight. I ask for empowerment. That Lord, you empower me, you anoint me more. Give me more grace to trust you more, to love you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Last we're going to pray and say, Father, I want to know you more. Reveal yourself to me more in the name of Jesus. I want to know you more. My Father, my God, reveal yourself to me more in the name of Jesus. I want to know you better and more and more. Lord, reveal yourself to me the more. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Father, I want to thank you for tonight again. I want to thank you for the privilege even to be here in your presence. We say, Daddy, please be glorified in Jesus' name. Daddy, today we pray every unrighteous of Satan over us, we counsel in the name of Jesus. By the victory you are given to us on the cross of Calvary, we pray tonight. Every time, every legal hold of the enemy over our life, our destiny, tonight we truncate, we scatter in the name of Jesus. Every satanic hold over our lives, our family, your church, tonight we scatter in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Quickly tonight, even before we share the grace, uh, let's go take our offering. There are various methods by which you can give. If you are watching us online, you can go to our website and use the donate button. You can use the donate button and you can give using the donate button. Or you can use uh, Dignify to give. Dignify is an app on the phone. Just search for Jesus Treasure as you find us. Or use the email, the email address info at rccjustreasure.org or, or use office at rccjustreasure.org. You can use that one to give. As you do, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. While we are giving, let me quickly uh, relay the announcement. Um, let me quickly go to the announcement. Uh, by the grace of God, our service time still remains the same. This Sunday, by the grace of God, we come in the morning here. We, t- we start with uh, the Sunday school. We start by 9.20 a.m. in the morning. I want to encourage you to, if you live very close here, just join us here on Sunday. I believe you you will not regret, you will love it. 9.20 a.m. in the morning on Sundays. Also, by 10 a.m., we start our worship service, which is by 10 a.m. in the morning. Worship service, 10 a.m. in the morning. Join us. As we do, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Also, do not forget our monthly program, the Cross by Midnight Prayer. The Cross by Midnight Prayer comes up every last day of the month, last day of the month, the last day of the month of every month. And you just have to call into a prayer line to join the prayer line. We, 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 the, the, the essence of the prayer line for us to pray to take charge the new month or the new month of May. This time we are praying to take charge the mon- month of May. And the flower will come out very soon. Praise the Lord. You can join us in all this program. I believe for sure you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. You'll be glad that you did. Praise the Lord. Well, it, well, let's just pray on the offering tonight. Father, I want to thank you for the privilege to give. We want to give you all the praise. We want to give you all the honor. We want to say, Father, thank you. Father, for as men that are given tonight and as men that are sowing their offering, they has given their offering and their tithe, I pray that, Lord, you bless the source of their income in Jesus' name. Lord, you bless their effort in the name of Jesus. Lord, you cause the doors to open unto them, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Prophet Lima, for answer prayer. For we pray, receive answers in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share the grace as a fellowship tonight. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall join that, O Lord, forever and ever. Amen.